Hi there, this is Robin Norgren, and I'm here to list eight reasons why you want to embrace your shortcomings. I know for so many of us, we struggle with um, living under the pressure of having to be perfect at all times. But I'd like to submit to you today that maybe, perhaps, we should embrace our shortcomings. Number one, when you cop to your shortcomings, you become accessible. Humanity is charming. To say, I don't know everything. I am not superhuman. Those are the kind of people I want to be friends with. Number two, for why you should cop to your shortcomings. You make space for other people to perform, shine, operate from their truest strengths, thereby inspiring you to do the same. Number three, when you cop to your shortcomings, you foster teamwork and collaboration. Number four, when you cop to your shortcomings, you get the benefit of other people's greatness. Number five, you create a genuine connection. Number six, you get help and people support you. Number seven, you actually don't have to do it all. And number eight, though there's many more, I'm sure, you give yourself permission to pursue your genius. If you've got the strength and fl to fly your own superhero flag, you can also celebrate and encourage others to do the same. Being well-rounded is actually overrated. Wouldn't you agree? When you focus on building your natural strengths and doing what comes easiest to you, you gain momentum in your life that feels efficient and exciting. You know, deeply nourishing kind of stuff, like your heart is on fire. Don't we all want to feel that? Are you with me? True strength is not necessarily about skill or adeptness. It's about vitality. Holding this kind of perspective changes everything. Do you understand that our actions really are driven by our desires? And it means that all the stuff that you may be good at, but you don't really love to do, you can, for the most part, dump. Now, I know we all have obligations so, of course, we're not talking about those things. But I bet if you were to sit, not even for a moment, to think, something would come rushing to your head that you might need to just let go of. That feeling of obligation that you keep doing something because it's easier than to not have the conversation about why you won't do something. Or... Let me put it another way, faking it till you make it. Because somehow, if you just keep doing it, it's going to be something that you want to do. I find in my uh, later years of life that the initial no that I don't want to say would have been a whole lot easier than going down the road and having to come in and interrupt someone's expectation of what they think I need to be doing. There's a book called Now Discover Your Strengths. In that book, Marcus Buckingham says, A strength is what you do that makes you feel strengthened. What? So it's not necessarily what you're good at or what you're capable of. It's what feels amazing when you do it. 
A weakness is the stuff that you do that makes you feel weakened. Could it be any more revolutionary? According to Buckingham, we never will be great at the things we have to try to be good at. But we can be amazing at the things we are easily great at. Let me say that again. We will never be great at the things we have to try to be good at. But we can be amazing at the things we're easily great at. I vote for that. What about you? Thanks, you guys, for stopping by. I plan to be here again to give you more food for thought. I love that you joined me today.